everyone, Duke here, and as you might have seen yesterday in the live stream, we've got 12 new weapons coming in the Brave Arsenal for Into the Light, and I just wanted to make a quick video today going over the roles, as they've shown those in this dev blog today, and basically the roles that I'm going to be going for when this comes out on April 9th. So this blog post shows all of the weapons that are going to be coming and all the possible roles on them, which is awesome. I love that we can see this ahead of time. And I'm just going to go over some of my thoughts. So starting with Forbearance, this is obviously a wonderful, outstanding, in my opinion, the best special weapon in the game weapon currently in Vow of the Disciple. Now there's two things to think about. A, this is a weapon from, like I said, Vow of the Disciple, which has the Soul Drinker origin trait, and that Soul Drinker origin trait is outstanding. It's basically an extra origin, or I'm sorry, it's basically an extra perk on the weapon because it's just so strong, and this version is not going to have that, so just that alone is definitely going to make this weaker. If you already have the current forbearance, then, you know, is this going to be worth going for? Maybe, we'll talk about that in a second, um, but definitely it's a, it's a big loss. Now the positive of this is, and this is something people were getting confused on uh, on my stream yesterday, even just after watching the Bungie stream, is these weapons are not going to require having these expansions at all. So like for Barons, you have to have Witch Queen, right, to be able to get that right now. You have to do the raid to be able to get that right now. During this event, you're going to be able to get this no matter what. If you're totally free to play, don't have any expansions, don't have anything, you can get this weapon. So that's going to be a huge, huge benefit. Now, the reason I'm I'm personally still somewhat interested in it, even though it's not going to have Soul Drinker, and I do already have the weapon, is it does roll Demolitionist, and I feel like Demolitionist is very, very interesting with Chain Reaction to be able to potentially be better than Ambitious, because right now I use Ambitious Assassin and Chain Reaction on my current Forbearance, but Demolitionist is not an option on the current Forbearance, and I'm definitely intrigued by that on how much potential energy you could get by killing a lot of things and being able to get the reload just off of throwing a grenade like that's always super nice too so that's definitely a benefit plus the origin trait for these brave arsenal weapons depending on if you're using light or dark subclasses can potentially give you even more grenade energy or a melee energy on the other side but could definitely work pretty well com uh, combined with all those things on getting a lot of grenade energy one final thing to note on Forbearance is they have mentioned, although I haven't heard them bring it up again recently, so we'll see, but I know they mentioned at some point that Chain Reaction on Special Weapons was going to be getting nerfed either at the launch of the Final Shape or potentially slightly before it, so might hurt a little bit, but Forbearance, again, right now, one of the best, if not the best, weapons in the game, so this is still going to be a great option, and if, you don't, if you're free to play, if you don't really do raids, if you don't already have this, this is going to be outstanding and a great weapon to get. Next we have Succession from Beyond Light, and this is from the Deepstone Crypt Raid. This is one of my favorite sniper rifles of all time, for PvE at least, and I really, really still do like this weapon. I don't use it a lot right now, just because there's not a super ton of situations where I'm using sniper rifles, but, you know, if there ever is a situation where I want to pull out a sniper rifle, Succession is usually the one I'm going towards. Now, for me at least, these rolls, I don't feel like there's anything new that really speaks to me that doesn't already roll on it in Deepstone Crypt, but if you are, again, free to play, don't already have this raid, don't really do raids, etc., Reconstruction and Vorpa Weapon is what I use on my current succession, and again, what I would definitely go for this succession as well, but this is probably the only weapon of the 12 that, for me personally, I don't really have a ton of interest in, just because I already have that, and there's not really anything different that speaks to me. Next we have the crowd favorite Falling Guillotine, so this is going to be nice right off the bat, because our current Falling Guillotines do not have origin traits, so we'll just get a little bit of an extra boost just by having an origin trait on it and get some extra potential bonuses. Now, what really is super interesting about this new Fallen Guillotine is we're going to have a couple different damage perks in the third column. So Vorpal Weapon, right off the bat, that's 10% bonus damage if you're using it you know, on bosses and stuff like that. We've got Frenzy as well, which can be even 15% bonus damage. Again, to go along with potentially Whirlwind Blade, as we normally do. Like, Relentless Whirlwind Blade is kind of the main role nowadays. And Relentless is still nice because it does give you that extra ammo economy compared to something like Vorpal Weapon, compared to something like Frenzy. So, in terms of total damage, even though you're going to be getting more damage like per swing and per, you know, time with Vorpal and Frenzy, you'll probably still be getting more damage re with Relentless total, but it also depends on, you know, how long your damage phases with stuff like that. Again, the fourth column has multiple good options. Surrounded is always interesting. It's one of the highest damage perks possible, but obviously has a much tighter, like, 
ability to proc it. You know, you have to have multiple enemies around you. You have to make sure you don't accidentally kill them with anything, any supers and stuff like that. So that's always tough with Surrounded. Again, Whirlwind Blade, already good. Bait and Switch is again on this, just like it was on the Slammer. So another option with Bait and Switch here. So for pure damage situations, we have, you know, some very very nice options and, and potentially even better options but definitely new options with having like damage perks in the third column we also have you know potential aoe stuff we got chain reaction in the third column which is super interesting we got eager edge again for those that i know we're going for the slammer to be able to get the vortex eager edge to get that little bit of extra boost again these are also going to be enhanceable all of all 12 of these weapons um, I believe once the final shape launches they'll be like retroactively enhanceable so you can get those enhanced perks on all of these um, perks as well, so another very nice boost there. Next we've got my highest kill weapon of all time. I have like 150,000 kills on my original Recluse. I loved Recluse. It was super duper awesome. I'm not gonna lie, like I'm, I'm a little hesitant to be as excited on Recluse as I am honestly on some of the other weapons just because we have a lot of really good SMGs. We have a lot of really good Void SMGs. Obviously Master of Arms is coming back and this was an outstanding, this is what, this is the perk that made Recluse back in the day. It's really going to, I, I just, I'm not 100% convinced that this is going to be super top tier. Um, what's interesting too is it does have Repulsor Brace and Destabilizing Rounds, and I believe this is the only, the only um, SMG of its frame and of its archetype that has that combination, which is cool. There's other Void SMGs that have that combination, but that's definitely interesting. Again, Feeding Frenzy Master of Arms seems just like a very solid, you know, killing stuff role, and I feel like if you are going to pair it with other, like, if, especially if there was, like, Void Seasons that allow you to very easily get, like, bonuses with Void, like we've had in the past, you know, you've, where you can pick up an orb and get Volatile, you can get lots of kills and get infinite heavy, you know, we've had different void specific seasons and void specific artifact mods that are super duper nuts, so obviously, like, this season, we're a little... Not a little, we're very pushed towards solar stuff, so a little bit of bias against it at this current moment. But a lot of really good roles. Again, Recluse was outstanding in the past. It always has felt really good, so very interesting. You even have like something like Subsistence to keep going with that, I mean, if you want to do that instead of Feeding Frenzy, to be able to just not even have to reload. So another option there. Frenzy, always a good option as well. Target Lock, you know, is always super interesting, although it has gotten nerfed recently on SMGs, so Target Lock might be a little bit less... And there's also the new perk, Desperate Measures, that's just rolling on a very significant portion of these weapons that are going to be coming out. And this is basically just an easier to proc version and a higher uptime version of Golden Tricorn, so I'm definitely interested in this perk as well on a lot of these uh, weapons that are going to be coming out. So a lot, of, a lot, a lot, a lot of different potential options here. Next we've got the Mountaintop coming back. This is a super exciting weapon to have coming back, and at least from the stream footage, the thing that I was worried about when you know, we first heard Mountaintop coming back was the fact that they nerfed this into the ground when they did the uh, sunsetting of it, right? You know, sunsetting was one thing, but the fact that you originally, you know, could jump around and target something, shoot towards something, and it would go in a perfectly straight line, hit exactly where you aimed, and then when they nerfed this right at the same time that they did sunsetting, the shot went wherever it wanted. You had It was just going wherever, and that was not useful whatsoever. But at least from the stream footage, it looked like you were able to jump around and be able to actually hit where you're aiming. So if that's the case, super excited for that. And not only that, but Mountaintop coming back, they are nerfing it for PvP. It's not going to be getting one... Uh, not going to be able to one-shot in PvP, which is probably for the best. But we're going to actually have rolls. Like, original Mountaintop didn't really have rolls on it like I had like rangefinder I think and you know obviously the micro missile but being able to get auto loading holster on mountaintop is going to be super exciting I mean back in the day with mountaintop we did have the ability to have like luna faction or uh, barricade reloads and just like insta reload anyway but like this will kind of bring it back to like you know something that's reasonable you know not that OP like what, for what that was but that was also based on other things not just mountaintop itself but auto loading super nice demolitionist you know similar idea ambitious similar idea overflow similar idea. There's, there's multiple like reload type perks in there which is cool um but honestly i'm probably going to be going for auto loading holster for sure and then you got a couple different damage things you got rampage you got i think honestly i'll probably be going for vorpal frenzy i could see as well as super duper nice as an option so very excited for Mountaintop. Again, for me, I think I'm going to be going for auto-loading and Vorpal, but a lot of different options here as well. 
Our next weapon coming back is Hammerhead, as another super, super popular crowd favorite, which is the whole point of all these weapons that are coming back. Um, another Void Machine Gun. We have a lot of really, really good Void Machine Guns already, so that's like one, I guess, downside to it. But again, A, if you're either free to play, maybe don't have options, because a lot of those other ones that are really, really good are in raids. So you maybe, maybe don't do raids, maybe don't have options for those, because you, know, you don't have the expansions, whatever. Um, and again, the other nice thing about this one, like a few of the other weapons before, is it does have double damage perks, which is always interesting. We have Rampage in the third column, and then, you know, quite a few different types of damage perks in the fourth column here. You know, pick your pick your poison, but that's something that we don't really have access to right now. We have the normal, you know, Feeding Frenzies, Envious Assassin, fourth times, Rebound Runs, you know, plenty of reload perks that can then go with one of your damage perks on the fourth column. Honestly, I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to be going for on this Hammerhead, because again, I already have kind of the, you know, the reload damage type stuff. I don't know if anything here super uh, Onslaught sounds kind of interesting to me. Um, I think either with Rewind or Fourth Times or basically something I can just keep going and keep shooting with could be super cool with Onslaught. Obviously, Killing Tally could work really well with either of those as well, but I already have Killing Tally on the DSC Void Machine Gun, so it's like, is this going to be different than that? I don't know. Again, there's also the option that this is the one thing that's for sure different is Rampage with a damage perk. Maybe Rampage Killing Tally could be super duper interesting, which is also something they mentioned here. Or again, Desperate Measures is also on this weapon as well. Our next weapon, they're bringing back the Blast Furnace. We love the four burst pulse rifles. A lot of people are super duper, you know, fond of those. So definitely a, a fun one coming back here. I've a couple different roles. I'm not going to really look at the PvP side. I'm more PvE. Definitely some PvP roles that I think could be awesome here too. But for the PvE side, I'm definitely interested in Kinetic Tremors and um, Firefly. Honestly, on most of the primaries, which we'll talk about a few more here soon. But Kinetic Tremors Firefly combination sounds super duper cool. I'm definitely interested in that. Honestly, most of these other third column perks, at least for PvE, not super interested in. I think Kinetic Tremors is, is definitely the kind of standout there. Um, you got a couple different ones. You got Firefly, you got Frenzy. I mean, even, you know, pretty much any of these, literally other than, probably, I probably wouldn't go Rapid Hit for PvE, but any of the other perks for PvE, I could see for sure. They're all damage buffs in, in some way, shape, or form. Again, Firefly is nice because it has both reload and an explosion to it, so you get kind of that reload perk, you get a little bit of damage AoE, you get even more damage AoE if you go with Kinetic Tremors with it, so a nice nice combination there for sure. Now we have the biggest meme, possibly in Destiny 2 history, Edge Transit, and ironically enough, this might be my most exciting weapon out of all of these that are coming back, especially if you're not much of a PvP person or a Trials person, because as you may or may not know, they just buffed grenade launchers very significantly, very, very significantly. And there is one weapon in the entire game at the moment, now there, now, now there will be two, but that can roll Envious Assassin and Bait and Switch. And that is the Cataphract Grenade Launcher from Trials. So it's in the game. It's already possible to get. And I'm, I, I don't have it yet, and I was actually planning on doing that this weekend. I'm still going to probably do it because, you know, surges exist, especially in, like, Master Raids and stuff like that getting different options if I want to use a grenade launcher that have different damage types, I'm still probably going to go for Trials. However, having another option here is huge. Envious Bait and Switch is absolutely nuts in terms of the amount of damage it can do. Because, again, for me, like when you talk about rockets, usually you're talking about Bait and Switch, you're talking about Explosive Light, right, when it comes to damage perks. The problem on a grenade launcher is you're not only shooting like 10 total shots-ish out of a out of a grenade launcher, right? Explosive light can hold up to seven charges um, if you have the enhanced uh, version, and then you know you could probably find two or three orbs during a damage phase, and you know if you're going to actually shoot out nine or ten rockets during a damage phase and actually get explosive light on all your, on all your um, shots. Uh, grenade launcher, that's not going to work. You're going to have twenty plus shots in your grenade launcher, so you're not going to have most of those shots buffed by explosive light which is where bait-and-switch is just so significantly huge. And then combine that with Envious Assassin, where we can get up to triple the base mags and be able to just shoot out, again, about 20 or so of those shots, all back-to-back-to-back-to-back, to back to back to back, all buffed by bait-and-switch. 
I'm excited for sure. There's some other interesting rules here too for like add clear and stuff with like, again, we got chain reaction here, got like destabilizing rounds and chain reaction combination could be super interesting. Like there's, there's some other roles that could definitely work for different situations, but for pure DPS and for pure, like this doesn't exist in the game outside of one place that is very RNG and not everybody's going to want to play it. I'm super excited for NVS and bait and switch hundred percent. Next, we've got a couple of hand cannons. We got Lunas Howl first. This is bringing back the ma Magnificent Howl perk, definitely in a weakened form, but still looking pretty strong, as it is a solar hand cannon. Uh, incandescent, to me, is, like, one of the best perks in the entire game. I like I, Pretty much any gun that kills things, like, you know, like, I don't really run it on a rocket. Like, you can roll an Apex Predator. I'm not running incandescent on that. But anything that, like, is meant to be ad clear and rolls incandescent, I am probably going for incandescent on it so definitely excited for that subsistence incandescent could be super nice we got heal clip i know is definitely an exciting perk for a lot of people on both the pve and pvp side maybe heal clip magnificent howl for pvp again i'm not going to look too much at the pvp stuff but incandescent i'm excited for for sure again to me outside of that this seems like more of a pvp type weapon which it was originally too so it doesn't that doesn't surprise me, but a couple interesting roles for PvE. Again, Incandescent is kind of what I'm mostly looking at, just because I, I love that perk. I think Incandescent is nuts. Again, obviously this season's even more nuts, but even outside of this artifact, I think it's still crazy. Next, we've got Midnight Coup, the super OG favorite of the Leviathan um, back in year one. Now, this one, again, as we talked about before, most of the primaries, I'm really liking the idea of Firefly and Kinetic Tremors. It also has Explosive Payload. The only downside, so Explosive Payload Kinetic Tremors sounds really cool, too. The downside of running something like Explosive Payload instead of Firefly here, I would love to get Explosive pay Payload and then Firefly, um, but that'd be Fatebringer and they're not doing that combination, can't get both. Um, but I really like Firefly just in having, it's basically like Outlaw, but also with an explosion. It's Outlaw and Dragonfly like combined. So like being able to get your reload and AoE stuff going is super duper nice. Again, if you don't really feel like you need the reload, if maybe you really stack up on reload like mods and stuff, then Explosive Payload, super great as well. But for me, I'm I'm leaning towards definitely going for Firefly and Kinetic Tremors, but we'll have to kind of see how it feels. Again, if I get an Explosive Payload Kinetic Tremors, I'm definitely going to use it and keep it. You also have Frenzy. You could potentially, like, kind of backwards, backwards it. I don't even know what I'm trying to say there, but, like, Explosive Payload and Frenzy or Firefly Frenzy get even more reload going because Frenzy is nice, too, because you get the damage perk and the reload all in one as well. Um, so Frenzy is definitely another option to try to get, you know, some damage and some reload in there you'd lose kinetic tremors so kind of depends on what you want and what you value most next we've got hung jury for the 437th time i'm not really sure whether bringing back hung jury again other than i do feel like it is one of if not the most iconic scout rifles of all time so it definitely fits on that side we already have the ability to get hung jury but that aside again kinetic tremors and firefly definitely excited for that it does have explosive rounds as well in the fourth column which is cool so kind of similar conversation to the you know to the uh to the midnight coup but again we have the ability to get hung jury here's another way to get hung jury it is what it is at this point but definitely because some some good roles and uh you know we'll, we'll definitely be wanting to go for for some of those as well and our last weapon is a kind of a surprise in my mind at least elsie's rifle which is basically the stranger's rifle from og d1 so that was definitely one i was not you know even thinking about coming back but definitely a cool cool decision and a, and a cool pick for our last weapon here. And this one is going to be in the energy slot, so it does not have the ability to kind of, you know, it's another primary, but it doesn't have the whole Firefly kinetic tremors combo. But there's definitely some other interesting ones here. We've got Desperado on it. We've got the whole Repulsor Brace Destabilizing Rounds combo. We've got, you know, Feeding Frenzy with a couple of the different damage perks, potentially, again, Desperate Measures as a new damage perk. Get Rewind Rounds in there as well, which could be interesting. Got some different PvP roles for sure that we can see with, like, Zen Moment, Headseeker, or something like that. There's a lot of... A lot of options with this one again I, this is not a weapon i'm seeing like a this is you know one size fits all definitely go for this combination type thing but again depending on your how you want to use it um there's a lot of flexible options and most of these perks and again like with most of the weapons that are coming back there's not too many like just dead perks you know a lot of times weapons have you know a couple different dead perks or at least what i would consider dead perks on them basically seemingly to just make the RNG a little bit harder, but most of these weapons that are coming back have a lot of good combinations where like 90% of the perks in both the columns 
are very good and very usable just depending on what you want it for. So that's super nice as well. Uh, and the last comment we're going to make on this blog post is do note that not all of these weapons are going to be available on April 9th. That's a little unfortunate, didn't see that one coming, but um, Recluse, Hung Jury, Succession, Edge Transit, LC's Rifle, and Full and Guillotine, so half of the weapons will be available on April 9th, and then the rest will be available one per week. So at least for this first week, especially, Edge Transit, definitely, and Recluse, definitely. I think those are probably the two, and Full and Guillotine as well. I think those three are going to be the ones I'm focusing on the most. Again, if you don't already have Succession, I think it's a great option. LC's Rifle, I think, could be a great option for if you really like Pulse Rifles. Uh, Hung Jury, again, we have Hung Jury, like... That's my least interesting of, of these six, I would say, for most people, but it's it, it's a good weapon. It's a great weapon. It's a super great weapon. It has some great rolls coming. If you don't already have a grid scout, you don't already have hung jury, like, don't get me wrong. It's just, you know, it's 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 in the game already. It's been, it's been a thing. So I'm a little less excited on that one, but still a lot of great weapons, and we'll have a lot to grind over these coming months. And that's all for today. I hope this video was interesting and helpful, and we will definitely be doing runs and doing helps on this activity um, when it comes out on April 9th and throughout, you know, the next couple months, so definitely come by and check out the stream if you're interested in getting some runs in, especially on probably be doing some legend runs as we get a little more comfortable and, and understand how the activity works. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and have a wonderful day.